you know I have a lot of games and I like to play them, but guess what else I have? Books. Books. Books! Books! Okay, these aren't mine and there's thousands more scattered around in various boxes waiting to go on the shelves still, but point is, I love books. And one of my favorite authors of my childhood and to this day is Brian Jacques. Ta-da! His world setting and puzzles stuck with me to this day and I love them. In fact, when Myth and I were kids, when we would watch the old TV show, we would get so pumped up with childhood excitement and we'd run screaming around the house until that intro song was over. Imagine my excitement when Matt requested me to play the Scout Legends of Redwall. Yeah! I installed and booted up the game, eager to get started. I went through all the menus, made sure my settings were correct, and then sat through text and more text and more text, and just because this is based on a book series does not mean I want it read to me. The art's very pretty and the voice acting isn't bad either, so it's not difficult to listen to. The writing definitely lacks some of the style of the original author, but it still feels like everyone involved knew the original style and had a real love for it. That thought is backed up by this whole game feeling like, original OC, please do not steal. That isn't really a point for or against the writers. I think when we love something, we always create new stories of what was going on beyond the main story in our head or written out as fan fiction or in our fantasies. In places undescribed with characters unmentioned. So with obvious passion already behind this project, I'm ready to begin. Oh, come on, yet more text? I was seven minutes into my play session by this point, but it really did feel like I'd been sitting there at least 20. This is a lot of text to drop on us right out of the gate. Well, we can choose our main character, either Sophia or Liam. They are betrothed mice. Yes, I guess I hadn't mentioned Redwall focuses on animal characters. There are no humans. Everyone is a badger, mouse, squirrel, etc. I personally blame Pearls of Lutra and Gavin Maxwell's Ring of Bright Water for my love of otters to this day. Anyways, they are mice, and the mouse telling the story to the young'un describes them in terms of philosophers? Was this a thing Brian Jox introduced later in the series that I don't remember? I'm genuinely not sure, but it's the one thing that felt like it had no place in the Redwall setting whatsoever. After another seven minutes of listening to the Elder Mouse, I timed these, it's time to start playing. We get to run along a path and get somewhat acquainted with the controls. The game is interesting looking, it's certainly not ugly, but some of the textures don't feel like they match with each other. More cartoonish smooth log bridges with more carefully rendered fur textures, bright sandstone rocks alongside more realistic snow. Overall, it reminds me of the show, so I was fine with the look. The controls were also a little squirrely. Get it? Cause they're mice! But everything still responded fairly well. I will take this moment to say I was playing with my controller, so it might control better with a keyboard. Once you arrive at camp, you're instructed to make soup and speak with your new companions to determine their likes and dislikes. I was having a lot of fun at this point. I was living in the world of my childhood. Sure, my tail was a little balder than I'd have liked and I wasn't wielding my iconic double-ended spear, but players can't be choosers. For those of you not familiar with the Redwall lore, I'm saying I was a mouse, not an otter. I also had found the run button. And by that I mean, it's impossible to miss him. How do you... Oh! Oh, I found a button. Deja vu, I have been in this place before, hi on the streets! I'm supposed to go that way! 
And I know it's my time to be me. But now, three things ran into each other. Firstly, the talking to allies. They were interesting at first, and I listened to everything they had to say, even if it took a while. I didn't mind. I was, at this point, immersed in the world. I'd found every other ingredient, but Laban loves rosemary. I'd heard from Fraby I could find some up by the hot springs, and I went on the hunt. Until the slightly jerky jumping controls put me in a spring. This is where our final element of frustration comes together, the checkpoint system. I'm thrilled there are checkpoints, but it puts me back before I had talked to everyone. I hadn't gathered their interests, their possible side quests, their information, their smells, anything. So I got to sit through the conversations again. I finally found out how to skip things, but there's so much to go through, it still takes so long, especially when I died to the shallow water two more times before realizing I hadn't even found the hot springs yet, the weird glowing flag had nothing to do with rosemary. Well, now I've talked to everyone, I have rosemary, and I am returning to camp to make the best fish cheese soup with rosemary, a bit of hot root carrot, and chives. Except that apparently I can't do that. There are limited soups I can make, and each has pre-decided focus. Why? Why? My soup sounds delicious. Now I just want that soup too. I spent all that time, and it meant nothing. I had invested myself in the world, in what everyone wanted, and what they wanted meant nothing. No one comments on my choice of soup later. None of that matters. I don't get comments for or against my decision. It taught me the map, but... Currently, I won't be on this map ever again after the tutorial. It was like a splash of cold water that dragged me entirely out of the world and experience. Trying to push past that and get reinvested, I headed out to the challenges. The stealth mechanics are broken. Not a lot of games have great stealth mechanics, and these are rough. Certainly not the worst I've seen, mind, but they'll only get glitchier once I'm in the main game. I finished the entire tutorial about smelling twice by accident because I was mashing through the menu and accidentally said I would like to try again. The orientation challenges were a lot of fun and I can only hope they actually matter in later chapters. Yeah, I'm reviewing the first part of the game. The Scout was officially released last September after about a year in early access. There's supposed to be more chapters coming? The developers, Soma, seem dedicated to listening and responding to feedback as well, based on the last few weeks that I've been lurking in their Discord. There still appears to be another tutorial area that isn't finished yet I stumbled across, as well as a random shooting gallery. I have the power of God and anime on my side. Oh, God. <laughs> My turd barrage! Not sure what it was there for, but I had a good laugh. Once you've passed all your tutorials, go to a party, celebrate officially becoming a member of the Scouts. This part is great, but your fiancé isn't there. Looking down the hill with your spyglass, you see him setting up another, bigger party when he's attacked. It's the Sea Rats of Clooney the Scourge! For any Redwall fan, Clooney is THE baddie that everybody knows. Not everybody knows Stella Lunaris. Not everybody knows Farago the Assassin. I have a feeling almost nobody knows Emperor Mad-Eyes. But everybody knows the name of Clooney! His evil sea rats are destroying the village and it's up to you to turn on the lighthouse and let others know you're in danger, hopefully saving as many of the villagers as possible along the way. Here is where you'll find out how messed up the stealth mechanics are. Now, to the developer's credit, they're going for a very interesting, intricate combination of elements. Not only do you need to physically stay out of sight, but you have to stay quiet. On top of that, you need to keep track of the air currents, and you can see from time to time, so that your smell doesn't give you away either, since you're all animals. None of that seems to matter if you're standing in a bush, though.
Yeah, running with enemies barely in sight will alert them, sometimes they'll notice you without any explanation, and at other times they simply won't notice you. Best of all, being spotted means nothing if there's terrain between the two of you because they can't jump. Too big, I guess. Finding out your beloved has traveled underground after the rats, you follow and take a shortcut to the lighthouse. The shortcut is not shorter. It's full of hiding villagers, most of whom are kind of assholes to you. You save these villagers by bringing them to a dumbwaiter shaft that transports them to a secret safe room. Pity you can't come along as well. I got pretty lost going around the circle, suffered a soft game crash, and several of the rats just refused to act naturally and move somewhere. Overall, though, being able to use smells to help identify where they were, locking them inside of rooms, and traveling around the ledges to hide worked once I got the hang of it. Well, there, there were a few more glitches that led to death, such as when I would hit the button to hang off a ledge and instead jump to my doom. But after about an hour, I was able to distract the last rat with my slingshot long enough to hit the loading zone just before he hit me. The next level introduces a stub commander for Clooney's army that we've never seen before. You have to creep amongst the sewers as he wreaks havoc outside. This was amazing. Yes, it was easy, but I really felt like I was back in the world, hiding from the beast, terrified each time I had to crawl past an opening. When Sophia draws him away to give Liam a chance to escape, my heart was beating like it was going to burst out of my chest. I was ready and eager for the chase that came next. And then the chase happened. Oh, guys, I can tell you're working hard, but this whole isometric chase sequence, awful. So I have a feeling that you're testing on keyboard. Makes sense, this is a PC game. But there are some gamers, like myself, that prefer to play with a controller when possible, and your game is built with controller support. And this isometric running sequence? On a keyboard, I guess you would just hold side and tap up and down. It's a lot harder on a controller as eventually your fingers start to slide, especially if you don't have a fresh new pristine controller and it's a bit worn. Normally that wouldn't be a problem, but if you let up for even an instant, he'll be on top of you. The chase was tense, that part was awesome, the set pieces as you ran were beautiful and creative, his insults were fun, but as I died over and over to my own controller, it felt less and less like my fault. But at long last, the camera shifted, I could run normally, and it stopped feeling like I was in any danger. But you reach the lighthouse with the beast right behind, the light of the beam blinding him as he tosses you off the tower by accident, leaving you to plunge helplessly. Wait, what? The end? Am I dead? What happened? I guess we have to wait until the next part to find out. Overall, the game shows heart and enjoyment. There's a lot to read, but that's also a lot of background and world that they've created. If you love the Redwall world, you'll probably also enjoy what's here quite a bit, but for those not invested in the world Brian Jocks created, it's probably kind of rough. Also, if you play as Liam instead of Sophia, just take everything I said for her and reverse their positions in the story. It doesn't seem to actually change anything based on when I was beginning to play through as him. I only originally chose Sophia because, well, I can't stand Liam's voice. No offense to your voice actor, just not my cup of tea. I still think while it's a little rough that I would highly, highly recommend this game to anyone who loves the Redwall series. This is a strong start with a good game. Not an amazing game, but definitely a good game so far, and I think we should all be carefully looking out for what they do in the future. Good work so far, guys. I'm quite certain I couldn't have done any better myself if I were carrying a sack full of dibbons. <laughs> The Lost Legends of Redwall, The Scout. A promising start with strong world building and ideas. It needs continued work to fully realize the full story and world, but Soma seems to be working hard and I'll be definitely be keeping an eye on their progress with eager interest. At this present moment, with only the first chapter released, 7 out of 10. Mm -hmm.